The Seahawks were able to keep their playoff hopes alive and now indeed control their own fate as they were able to capture a last minute victory against the Tennessee Titans thanks to a fantastic drive, a game winning drive now in back to back weeks by Geno Smith and company. And they edge out the Tennessee Titans 20 to 17 in a game that was looking kind of tough as we got into the third quarter about whether or not Seattle was going to be able to hang in there. Could the defense continue to hold up a little bit there in the run defense, which was seemingly starting to kind of get shaky? Could the offense find some footing on a day where there seemed to be no answers wherever they seemed to look? Well, on both accounts, the answer would indeed be yes. It was a day where the offense struggled out the gates. The play calling wasn't terribly exciting from Waldron. You continued to have really no success when it came to running the ball much of throughout this game. And it's not really because of Charbonnet or Walker. Walker getting the majority of the carries on this day. There just weren't any holes. There was a lot of early penetration on the plays by Tennessee Titans. And they just did a good job of corralling the Seahawks run game, as has kind of commonly been the case throughout this entire season. So it was really going to be on the back of throwing the ball. And in the first half, just nothing was really getting done. Geno Smith was coming out and looking a little rusty here after not playing for a couple of weeks. Also, maybe not looking at maybe his most maximum health. Like I said before, Shane Waldron's play calling continues to be a little bit of a head-scratching one this year, where it continues to be an offense that doesn't look much like the Rams offense from a couple years ago that we brought him from, but something new unto itself. Nonetheless, we got into the second half, offense found some footing. And likewise, the defense in the first half yeah, they had some issues in stopping the run with Derrick Henry. I think some of it got impacted where they had a plan in place that you absolutely got to laud the coaching staff for where they were going to come into this game by designs and roll out the base defense more often than they've shown throughout the course of this season. And that the uh, Titans couldn't just go heavy and big and count, up on, count on the Hawks on the other side of it to then match them with a nickel defense. They would have a base defense in order to counter that back. And then Jordan Brooks went down to an injury, and now you're having to slide back into nickel defense. And then that made them just a little bit more vulnerable against the run throughout this game as you are a little lighter with your package than you would like to have been coming back into it. The Seahawks even countered a little further on that throughout the game by trying to go even to more 3-4 looks than we've seen in recent history. But they were still going with a lighter man box, so to speak, having a nickel corner in there instead of a true linebacker, instead of a Devin Bush You've got the Artie Burns out there, and it was just struggling on them. It was a struggle for them throughout the course of this game to hold up and stopping the run, be it either Derrick Henry or rookie wonder kid out there, Tajay Spears, who also did his share of damage. But nonetheless, as hard as it was for the defense at times to find its footing in that early part of the game, they only held the Titans to just 10 points, and the Hawks got back at the other side of halftime with a chance to get back into striking distance for the offense, which really didn't have any answers in that first half. Geno on some of the throws. Just what are you doing? Uh, some of the throws like the one he made to Jackson Smith and Jigba in the back of the end zone where not only does he not give Jackson a chance to make the catch, but he throws it so far out of bounds and Jackson's just trying to go make the catch that it's, it sends Jackson into a concrete you know, wall that's exposed there below and he bangs his knee, a very scary moment where you're really going, come on, Gino, you know, we need to get you together here. We need this game. But Gino did come back. The offense did come back. And as I said before, in that second half, they didn't have any kind of running game to fall back on here. 20 carries, 58 yards in total across the board from everyone. And like I said before, not Walker's fault, not Charbonnet's fault, just not any holes to be had. Those guys made some, especially in Walker's case, miraculous runs without there being much there to work with. There would be times where he had to have a sea of dark blue around him and would only need just a little bit of a crack and would take that crack to go get himself some yards but there wasn't a lot of yards to be had there. You're going to have to pass. And Gino locked in. His decision-making got more on point in the second half. His decisiveness got on more on point in the second half. He was just letting it rip. And not only was he tossing throws out there with velocity, he was tossing it with accuracy into very tight windows. And it was great to see him just kind of let it loose, let those throws rip into that second half, not play with some of that tentativeness that you kind of felt in the, in the first half, and it carried the Seahawks th team through to enough to be able to do just enough, offensively speaking, in order to get the job done. Now, Geno Smith, 25 of 36, 227 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, six-yard attempt. Now, these are going to be statistics that are going to make anybody's eyes pop out of their head. But got the job done, and there weren't any interceptions. There weren't any turnovers. He, clean, he played clean ball there, which if you look at the final score, you absolutely required the quarterback position today to, to play cleanly. 
And I don't think that that can be understated here when looking at this game, nor the impact of that. The Seattle Seahawks receivers really showed their impact in this football game. 24 targets. You came away with 18 receptions on those 24 targets, almost 200 yards receiving from this core. And again, keeping in mind, you had no really running back production to speak of really in this game for the most part, and nothing else really being given to you from the tight end position, partly just because we just kind of ignore our tight ends sometimes. So it was on the receivers to really get it done offensively along with Geno at the quarterback position, and they did their job. These guys got open. They made the catches, like I said, on those tight windows. They made the high degree of difficulty catches when those were required as well. DK Metcalf coming off last week where he was money down the line once again on the final drive in this game was uh, an impactful and a part of that, but he made one of the great catches again on this season where he's going down on a nine route. The corner is pulling his arm back, so he's got to tap the ball up, rip the ball, rip his arm free, get two hands then on the ball, get his foot down, and then toe tag, drag, swag his way to completing the touchdown. A very, very tough catch. We saw a little bit of Jake Bobo had a catch like this earlier in the year, but tremendously done by DK Metcalf to haul that ball in where the Hawks really, really needed their, those points, and they had been over two in the red zone. Kind of a common problem we've seen with the team throughout this year where they have kind of issues down the red zone, two of four today. But boy, they got it where it counted there at the end. And then on the final drive, Gino was money. Absolutely, Tyler Lockett was a security blanket throughout the day when he needed kind of a third and long, when he needed any kind of completion. Tyler's been like that for him this year. Sometimes Hawks fans will shade Tyler a little bit. Well, he's lost some of his, you know, he doesn't have any yak he provides. He does not kind of, not kind of as fast as he once was. But he still gets open. He still makes big catches. He's still very clutch as he was on that final drive. And Jackson Smith the same way. Came back from that knee, banging into that concrete wall. Didn't miss a step in this game. Provided his share of impact with his own six catches on seven targets. And uh, again, all of these guys working together fluidly in this game where they're all kind of be able to provide that dynamic impact. Would have loved to have seen a little bit more of DK, of course, because at times this team just sort of forgets about him for two or three quarters at a time. But he did find his share of touches, he did find his share of targets, and he did make his share of impact and, uh, hey, even hurdled the guy in this game. Not too shabby there by DK. Defensively speaking, they held down Tannehill in the passing attack for all of this game. No doubt about that. Tannehill, 18 and 26, 152 yards, no touchdowns, only an 84 rating, a 38 QBR. So the defense did its job on the back end. That's missing Devin Witherspoon in this game. So you were a little lighter out there in the secondary, missing Jamal Adams on the back end in this game. So we're lighter in that secondary. Yet they did their job there. Now, on the other side of it, the Titans offense was able to run the ball pretty effectively. And this has been a little bit of an ongoing concern throughout the course of this year. 31 carries, 162 yards in total. You didn't like Derrick Henry really blow up like he did the last time you played this team two years ago where he really went off and you allowed Tannehill to throw for 360 in that game. So you were able to at least keep Henry Moore into lock zone at 19 carries and 88 yards. But Tajay Spears was able to come in as sort of a guy to give Henry a blow to be kind of that you know secondary back that's a little bit a different style. And he was able to be effective both as a runner and as a pass catcher. Another encouraging sign from this defense within their ability to stop the passing attack of the Titans today was their efficiency within their pass rush something that we haven't said much over the past couple of weeks where they're just getting nothing done as far as even pressuring, hurrying, say nothing of sacks as far as against the opponent. This week against a Titan offensive line, which has not been maybe quite as strong as what they've been dealing with recently, they were able to make some headway. The team got six sacks, eight quarterback hits. Everybody was able to kind of chip in and do their part. Jaron Reed, the sack, Mari Edwards with the sack, Draymond Jones with the sack at the end. And Poye Mafe got back off the schneid from the past couple of weeks, and he was able to get a couple of sacks himself. He played a real, really fine game out there, filled up the stat column in this one. Six tackles, two sacks, two tackles for loss, and four quarterback hits. He played a really good game. Bobby Wagner came in as well and continues to be his steady self. Yes, I know there's sometimes in some weeks teams are able to target him out there and pass coverage, but he is overall had a solid season, and he has been a major upgrade over what we had last year in Jordan Brooks and Cody Barton playing the position. Here in this game, 11 tackles, one sack, two tackles for loss, and an additional quarterback hit. 
just doing what he does every week, going out there and playing. And as you can see with Jordan Brooks going out in this game early due to injury, Bobby Wagner and his consistency, longevity, and the fact you can count on that guy every week to be out there on the football field is a big part of what his value is that he brings to the table. Uh, yes, again, I know you can put your little criticisms to him here and there in the pass coverage aspect, but he has still been a very good player for the most part against the running game, and he has still remained a top-notch pass rusher from the middle linebacker position. But that was the Titans' offense, was simply in running the ball. Hawks did enough to stem the tide there, to clog it up, to keep it uh, held up a little bit, and get the job done on that side of it, including a great stop there at the end where the Titans take over after the Seahawks get a great final touchdown drive, which we'll talk about in a second, but they come back and they're able to get a nice stop there at the end with a minute left. Titans got a timeout on the clock. They only need to go get a field goal. So it's certainly within the NFL, that's plenty of time to make that happen. And they give a couple of completions up, but then the pass rush starts to set in where you don't have to blitz. The front four goes and gets it done. Boye Mafe gets back there. Draymond Jones gets back there. Tariq Woolen then comes back and makes a great tackle, keeping the runner in bounds so the clock has to roll out at that point. Titans don't have any more time. Fantastic stop there at the end. The defense did just enough today to get the job done against the Titans offense, which isn't the most dynamic, and you had Tannehill out there. But like I said, you look at this two years ago and how you played this Titans team at home, giving up 360 to Tannehill, giving up somewhere, I think, in the neighborhood of 130, 140 or something like that to Derrick Henry as well on the ground. On both fronts, much better played, and this is on the road against Tennessee. So that was really good to see on the Seahawks part. Encouraging overall, I would say, from that. The final drive, as I said, was executed wonderfully, capped off with a Colby Parkinson touchdown. Colby was a guy when he was drafted, and you wouldn't have known this, and him being here the last couple of years because he slid in more as this third option tight end, and he's been more of a blocker as he's kind of added more weight and gone along. But he's a guy when he came out of Stanford that was more of the guy that you could trust through those trust throws down there by the red zone. There was a lot of that on his Stanford tape. The Seahawks just haven't leaned a lot into that throughout his pro career, but he's got that skill set to do it for the reasons he showed you, where he's 6'6", long arms, can jump through the roof, and when you're a smaller quarterback, it's so hard to get through that big body to get to that ball. You can't always even see where the ball's coming in at. How do I get around to it? And that's just kind of what happened to the cornerback. And if Colby goes out there and attacks it with his long arms out there, it's almost can be but like, sort of stealing candy from a baby in that moment if you throw it right. And Gino threw it right. Great trust throw. It's third and goal there. You're definitely in two down territory. But a great trust throw by Geno Smith to just get it in there in the right spot to where Parkinson could get up and go make that kind of grab, contested catch with the defender behind him. But he showed you with that big body, he can do that. And that's something the Seahawks can look to utilize as we move on into the future. There were still some glaring issues that still popped up again on this team in certain fronts of things uh, along this defense and just overall the team, a, a lack of discipline. You got DJ Dallas throwing a punt after a fair catch because a guy bangs him, which draws a penalty flag and pulls the team back. You have Artie Burns here where you get a stop and it looks like it's going to be third and short and the game's on the line and you're trying to get a stop by the Titans and Artie Burns decides to hammer the guy in the face across from him, giving them the auto first down, giving them essentially the auto touchdown in that moment. For the folks still kind of frustrated with certain things they're seeing from the team in that respect of things, I think they're going to still remain a little bit frustrated coming on the heels of even this win as those kind of old problems still show themselves up, those unforced errors, things that you actually can control. But the team went out here and got the win. And on the back of getting this win, the Minnesota Vikings went out and lost to the Detroit Lions. So now Seattle is in this playoff run. They are right now in the seating as it stands right now. They control their own destiny as you go through the rest of this year. And that is all you can ask as a football team at this point in time in the year. If you haven't gotten yourself to a contender state yet, if you're trying to kind of fight, claw, claw, scratch, do whatever you can to pull yourself up into that playoff role. I know we've been down this lane many of times. I know for many Seahawks fans, it's not going to mean a whole hell of a lot if we slide on into the back door of the playoffs. But I say, if you can get in there, got a fighting possibility, you got a fighting chance. You're one of the last few remaining teams and funky things can happen in the playoffs. Balls can bounce in a strange way and you never know. So keep the hopes alive. The Hawks certainly did today. They did their part. They took care of business. Arnie Style points out here in the NFL. Counts as a W in the victory column and that's what we need to come away with. We control our own victory now. We're not going to wait the next couple of weeks and need this team to lose and that team to lose. We go win twice. We're in the playoffs. Anything can happen. My name is Brandon King. This is the Hawks Nest. 
please hit the like button, please subscribe. But beyond all that, don't you ever forget, go Hawks.